he is doing. We bless the name of the Lord for his mighty works, his mighty acts. Amen. 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 We're here to, tonight for another Bible study. Amen. And amen. Let's just begin to stand on our feet. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, and we just praise you, Lord. We honor you, Lord, for all that you're doing, oh God, Lord, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God, your name is worthy to be praised, oh God. Lord, your name is to be worshipped. Your name is to be adored. <clears throat> God, and we just thank you, Lord, for just being awesome. We thank you, Lord, for, Lord, for the breath of life, God, that you have breathed into us again. So, Lord, so Lord, even right now, God, even tonight, God, we ask the Lord for your presence, God, to come. We ask the Lord for your, your presence, God, to just even come and just saturate this place even now. Lord, have your way right now, God, in Jesus' name, God, to those that are watching. God, those that are tuning in even now, those that are on Facebook Live and those that are here, God, we pray, and God, let the same power that's in here, God, be the same power that visit them even over the airways, oh God. Lord, we just thank you, oh Lord, Father God, for being omnipresent, oh Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, that you're not constrained, God, to a certain place. You're not constrained, God, Lord, to a certain location, Father God, Lord, that you're able, Father God, to allow your word and your power and your Glory, God, to just spread and just permeate, Lord, throughout anywhere, Lord, that you're invited, that you're welcome. So, God, we just lift up hands on God tonight, God. God, we just thank you, Lord, for healing us, for keeping us, God, for, for continuing to do what you do, God. We just honor you and we praise you, Lord, for all that you're doing, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord on tonight. Come on, clap your hands, amen. Just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just Lord, we just love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. God, we invite you into our presence. Oh, God, enter into this place. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you right now. Thank you. For those of you that are tuning in, for those of you that are tuning in at home, we ask in that you would just even begin just right where you are, just begin to praise God, just begin to lift him up, just begin to magnify him, just begin to magnify him and cry out unto him, amen. He, you're worthy, oh God, you're worthy to be praised, oh God, hallelujah. God, we just thank you, oh Lord, for just being good. We thank you for being awesome, hallelujah. God, we just thank you, oh Lord. We worship you in the beauty of holiness. God, we worship you, God, God, in the beauty worship you God hallelujah God this is our response oh God Lord this is this is our response God to how good you are this is our response father God to the ways you've made God for who you are this is this is our response oh God this is our responsibility father God it's the least that we can do hallelujah God it's the least that we can do God this is our reasonable service God to live for you oh God Lord to lift your name up Father God, to uh, exemplify you, oh God. Lord, we don't want the rocks to cry out. Father God, we don't want, Father God, the rocks to take our place. But God, we just thank you. And God, we honor you, oh Lord. Father God, with clean hands, God, and a pure heart. Father God, who think we are those, God, who have not lifted up. Father God, uh, deceitfully, nor sworn deceitfully. And Father God, this, uh, we be thank God, that will lift your name up and glorify you in all the earth, oh God. Amen. If you are in agreement, amen. Just shout hallelujah and give God praise. If you are in agreement with that, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go ahead and plow on into this home tonight. We're going to talk about some things. Hallelujah. Uh, here, we've been talking about call of duty. Amen. We've been talking about call of duty. Amen. We've been talking about call of duty. Uh, this is week four. This is week four of our teaching, and uh, uh, we've been uh, talking about this and dealing with this quite extensively. And uh, you know, we just, we just really been taking our time with this. Really haven't been rushing. We really haven't been, um, you know, uh, breaking the speed limit on this. We've pretty much been taking our time to, to just really make sure that uh, uh, the body of Christ is fully aware of um, of our responsibility as it pertains to spiritual warfare amen we hear it talk we hear it talked about a lot we hear uh, spiritual warfare dealt with and mentioned in uh, churches and in ministries but we want to um, basically help uh, the people
people of God to understand what it consists of. What you know? What are some of the things you're going to see? What are some of the things you're going to deal with as it pertains to spiritual warfare? Amen. Amen. It's more than just you know what goes on around the altar. Amen. But spiritual warfare is is our duty. It is every believer, uh, regardless of your title, regardless of your kingdom responsibilities uh, in the local church assembly, every believer that has named the name of Christ is responsible and takes a sense of ownership and takes a sense of obligation as it pertains to spiritual warfare, okay? Because you and I, we're going to deal with stuff on a daily basis, amen? We're going to deal with things on a daily basis and not just on Sunday morning, you know, not just on the weekends, you know, we're going to deal with things on a daily basis. And we understand that we are uh, in the world, but we're not of the world. Okay, so if we are in the world and not of the world, then we are going to be uh, in opposition and go against uh, the things that are in the world and how the world system operates. Okay, if you're going to be a child of God, then you have to understand that you are going to go against the world system. You want to go against it. In other words, we go against the grain. I kind of like the way uh, one of my brothers, uh, Tim Pounds, uh, said in the song, he said, going against the grain like a fresh fade. Amen. And so this is what we're talking about. This is what we're dealing with is whenever we are dealing and whenever we are living in the world system, living in the earth that's being influenced by the world system, then those of us who are born again, we're going to be in opposition of that. Amen. Whenever you are a child of God, you're going to be in opposition of that. Amen. So, so, uh, and, and part of that opposition will involve some level of spiritual warfare on some level. Okay. So, so again, we've been talking about this every, uh, every week, uh, with the exception of last week. Amen. And so um, um, this week, I'm going to do things a little different. Uh, I'm going to cover a few things uh, that we haven't covered. This, well, I, I mentioned it a little bit. And, we, uh, and we're going to talk about weapons tonight. We're going to talk about uh, the use of weapons and, 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 and what you have at your disposal. That's what we're going to be talking about. Amen. Amen. All right, so, um, so just for a few things, just for a few um, uh, directives, if you will, uh, those of you that are watching at home, you should see the same slides that we're seeing in here that's showing up on our screens. You should see that on the screen beside you at home. And uh, so it should correlate with what we're looking at in here. All right, so the Bible says this. Okay, and this is one of our foundational scriptures that we talked about and that we dealt with early in week one. Second uh, Corinthians ten and four. Second Corinthians ten and four. Okay, make sure you find that. Second Corinthians ten and four. Okay, one of the scriptures that we laid out that we established uh, pretty much uh, at the beginning of week one. What the Bible says this, it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. All right, let me read that again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, the weapons of our military service or our strategia. Because anytime you're talking about warfare, you cannot talk about warfare and not factor into the equation some type of military conflict or strategy or war, okay? Warfare is a military term, okay? <laughs> so if you're gonna say, uh, well, I'm going through warfare, now I'm not talking about warfare or I'm not talking about self-inflicted stuff. I'm not talking about stuff that you brought upon yourself because of disobedience or rebellion or anything like that. Because there's some things we can bring upon ourselves. 
and then we'll call it warfare. Okay, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the external stuff. I'm talking about the stuff that comes when the enemy is seeking to come against you. Okay, so for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay, so when the Bible says not carnal, this means that these weapons that we are dealing with, they're not fleshly. These weapons are not something that you can find or they're tangible or something you can get at a pawn shop or, 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 or the swap shop. No, these weapons are not carnal. They uh, are warfare weapons or are, uh, are, are, uh, warfare weapons. They are spiritual. Amen. These are spiritual weapons, but mighty through God. Right. So. These weapons are to be used through the vein or being used through the connection or the partnership with the Spirit of God. Okay? These weapons that we're going to talk about tonight, they are not meant to be used apart from the partnership of the Lord. Okay? Or used through the connection of God. Okay, that's why he says, but mighty through God. All right, so you cannot utilize these weapons. You can't utilize them if you're not connected with God, if you're not in the spirit, if you're not walking in the spirit, if you're not in tune in the spirit. Okay, because the only way these weapons are going to work is that they're working through the vein or through the conduit or the connection of God. Notice that, notice that's what he says, but mighty through God, not through yourself. Or not by your own power, or not by your own strength. Amen. That's why he says, yeah, that, that's exactly why he says that. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And just like we uh, established in week one, you cannot engage in spiritual warfare in your own strength, intellect, or prowess. Man, can't do it. Cannot do it. Okay? So that's why the Apostle Paul makes it an emphasis. And he's teaching the Corinthians, make sure that you are fighting and you that you are engaging through your connection with God, through your relationship, through your kingdom citizenship. Amen. Through your connection with the kingdom of God, through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, right? So, so now the emphasis that I want to bring your attention to is the word weapons. Why did Paul put a plural on weapons? It didn't say for the weapon of our warfare is not carnal or not carnal. So there are multiple weapons that the believers should have at their disposal when it pertains to spiritual warfare. Okay? Now, one of the comforting things that ought to be able to give you a little bit of peace tonight is knowing that you got more than one weapon to choose from. Now, <laughs> that, that ought to get you excited or that ought to sober you up a little bit. That ought to make you feel a little bit good, amen, and, and knowing that there's more than one way, my God, there's more than one way for you to overcome and be victorious in the mode of warfare. So that's why I highlighted that right there. That's why I highlighted that. It says, for the weapons of our warfare. Man, that's comforting. That's that's good right there. <laughs> listen, a lot of stuff that we're dealing with, listen, we're going to need some options. <laughs> we're going to need some <laughs> We're going to need some options. You know? Uh, you know, whenever you go uh, and look at the Navy SEALs and look at the Army Rangers, they got more than one weapon on them. They got uh, their primary weapon and then they got some other weapons and tools that they got with them just in case they might can't reach that weapon or, you know, they got more than one way to, to get to their target. Amen. And so I want to help help your understanding flow in that direction 
and knowing that when it comes to spiritual warfare, uh, you can employ and you can utilize more than one method, more than one way, more than one strategy. Now, it's not saying that none of them work. It's just saying that you have multiple ways to overcome. Okay? So that's pretty much the gist of it. All right, so let's talk about some weapons tonight. Let's talk about uh, some weapons and how to use them. Okay, let's talk about that. All right. So number one, for, for those of you that may not know, those of you at home that may not quite know what a weapon is, it's basically a tool, an instrument, or implementation used in warfare. Okay? We made a point. We made a, a, a point in week one, week two, that a lot of times whenever a soldier goes off to battle, they don't just drop them off in the jungle. They don't just drop them off in the desert. They don't just drop them off in the swamp or whatever without nothing to fight with. Okay? But in order for them to execute their mission and to execute their purpose and to cross off their objectives and at the end of the battle is mission complete, they got to have some type of weapon. They got to have some type of tool that help them in the mission. Amen. Glory to God. And so this is why uh, when it comes to spiritual warfare, we got to have some tools or some type of strategy that we can implement to uh, in order for us to have the advantage. Amen. In order for us to have the advantage. All right. Now, if my target now, 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 uh, if 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 I had a target 20 yards away, um, yeah, I probably could throw a rock. Yeah, I, I probably could throw a pebble, throw a couple of rocks and see what it do. You know, and you might, you might hit your target, but if you had a gun, if you had a rifle, if you had something else a little bit more effective, right? then it's going to help you in, in your mission. It's going to help you in what you're trying to do. So this is what it's trying to say. It's saying that we have a weapon. We have a way that can cause us or help us to be victorious and to be on the advantage against the enemy and against his kingdom. All right. So here we go. Number one, the word of God. Okay. The word of God. The Word of God is a weapon, okay? One of the most primary weapons when it comes to warfare will be the Word, okay? It's going to be the Word of God. Ephesians 6 and 17, and the Bible says what? And the sword of the Spirit, whenever Paul is teaching the Ephesians and breaking down the armor of God and kind of what you need to have on you and what you need to be equipped with. One of the last things that he that he mentions is the sword of the spirit, right? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right. So he compares the word of God to a sword. Okay. He compares the word of God to a sword. Now, one of the ways that we're going to be able to be uh, victorious um, when it comes to engaging in the spirit is not only like being familiar with the word of God, but you got to know how to use the word of God. Okay? I'm not talking about just memorizing scripture. Okay? Because you can memorize scripture and still lack meaning. Let me say that again for, for, for those at home. You can memorize scripture and still not know meaning. And still not have an understanding in terms of what you are quoting and what you are reciting. So with you just memorizing scripture... It's no different than you not knowing how to handle a sword. Mm. Right? 
Now, the word of God, it is a standard weapon, okay? When I say a standard weapon, it's probably one of the most common weapons you can use, okay? When it comes to warfare, when it comes to your walk with the Lord, and this is a weapon that every believer should have on their hip, okay? <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, I, I, I thought it was very interesting how uh, that disciples had swords. Whenever they walked with Jesus, they had a sword. Okay. Luke chapter 21, 22, somewhere, somewhere up in there, um, it makes mention that they had swords. Okay, So I think that's a very interesting uh, connection, a very interesting revelation that whenever we're walking with the Lord, you need to have a sword. Okay? <laughs> now, what makes... The, the word of God or what makes the sword so effective is that it's an offensive and a defensive weapon. Okay? It's an offensive and a defensive weapon. It will offend and it can advance and go against the contrary and it can defend against the contrary. Okay? Whenever Jesus, whenever Jesus said, doth my words offend you? And he's speaking truth. And he says, you have heard it said, um, thou shalt do this, but, but I say unto you, um, so the word will offend pride. It will offend uh, your way. What you want to do. It'll go against your will. <laughs> right? It will offend. The word of God, it will uh, make an advantage. It can cause it to be advantageous. And then it can defend. It can, it can cause you to be in a place where it is a defense unto you. The word of God acts as a defense. Okay? Because, listen, whenever a person knows how to use a sword he knows how to swing it but then again he also knows how to use it to block stuff check out those old movies whenever they're fighting you know clean 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 now whenever a swordsman is is moving forward He's trying to get the advantage. Clean, 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 clean. But then whenever he's getting swung at, he's blocking. Clean, 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 clean. Yeah, you know. So that's what I'm saying. The word of God can offend and defend. It can help you advance. And then it can help block some stuff. I got a receipt. Remember whenever Jesus was in the wilderness. And Satan was coming at him with all types of temptations. Three temptations. Satan came, came to him. You know, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Clean, clean, clean. And then Jesus said, <laughs> oh. All right. So he, so he uses the word. He responds with the word. He responds with the word with every temptation and he blocks the temptation or he blocks the advancement or he blocks what the enemy wants to do. Okay? Right? Right? So that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. He, 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 he blocks and he goes against what the enemy is trying to come at him with. Okay? With every temptation he blocks it with the sword, with the word, right? And that's how we got to do. That whenever we coming against stuff and stuff is coming against us, you have to know the word. <laughs> how are you going to be a, a child of God and not know the word? We know church. We know cues. We know cliches. But there's no power in cliches. There's no power in, the, in, in, in a cliche. 
There's no authority in a cliche. Okay? You have to know the word. The word of God. Know the word. Now, the word cuts and it divides. Okay? The word of God can cut and divide. In other words, it can make a distinction. He, in, uh, in the book, book of Hebrews, it says that the word of God is sharp and quicker than any two-edged sword. Right? Not only does it cut and it divides, but it's a swift weapon. Okay? It's an efficient weapon. The word is able to operate and it's able to execute very quickly. Okay? It's sharper than any two-edged sword. A two-edged sword can cut your arm off. It can make a deep gash. But a, but a natural sword cannot penetrate soul and spirit. Right? A natural sword cannot Penetrate and deal with the unseen. You see what I'm saying? And there's some things that you're going to battle with that are unseen. You feel it, you discern it, but it's unseen. You can't get a knife and a, a Rambo knife, a <laughs> pocket knife to deal with that. Because there's some things going on in the soul of a man. There's some things going on in the spirit of a man in the unseen parts of an individual that you're going to need the sword of the spirit. You're going to need the word of God to do that, to handle that, to, 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 to deal with that and to fight against that. Okay? One of the things that the, that the word of God will do is to um, make a distinction between truth and error. Okay? Especially in today's time, there's a lot of error going on. There's a lot of false doctrine going on. There's a lot of there's a lot of erroneous doctrine going on and faulty belief systems and opinions that people are trying to push off like it's fact. They're trying to push off as it's true. But when the word of God is applied to it, the word of God is able to separate fact from fiction. The word of God is able to separate what is truth and what is a lie. So the word of God is able to separate truth from error. It, it is also able to inflict damage. Okay, it's also able to inflict damage upon uh, Satan, uh, devils, spiritual wickedness, high places, all that type of stuff. Okay, it's able to inflict damage. This is one of the reasons why the enemy why a lot of industries and a lot of um, places and businesses and whatever, they, they, they don't want the word of God posted. They don't want the word of God around because the enemy knows the power that's in the word. The enemy understands that the worlds were framed by the word of God. He understands the authority that lies within the word of God. And so that's why, you know, well, we don't, you know, that's why against the Quran, we ain't got, they ain't got no problem. Against the Talmud, they ain't got no problem. But, but whenever it comes to the Bible, everybody got an issue. We don't want the Bible. Ah, we don't want the, you know. And then we got to be careful because some of these places, especially in court and judicial systems, they will try to put the Quran as equal with the Word of God in terms of authority. I've seen some, some footage where people um, um, wanted to swear uh, on another book other than the Bible. Right? So the enemy know. The enemy know. <laughs> All right, so how do we better handle the word of God? Learning how to use the word is done through reading. Number one, you got to read the word. 
Okay? You have to read the word. Okay? Number one, we, we got to read the word. Okay? You have to put a value system on how much you need the word of God. Okay? The word of God is equally bread as it is a sword. Okay? In order for us to grow and mature and get stronger as people of God, you got to eat the word. What I mean by eat the word? You got to literally read the word and as you're reading it, your spirit man is consuming it. Okay? Now as you're reading the word of God, you we need to be asking the Holy Spirit to open up our understanding in terms of what we're reading. Okay? In all of our getting, let us get understanding. Let's not read the word of God and then whenever we put the Bible down or turn the app off, we don't know what we read, nor can we retain or get a revelation in terms of what the word is talking about. Okay? So you learn it through reading, learning it, learning the word. Okay, so this is why Bible study is so important. This is why going to church is so important. Sitting under the word of God being preached, right? Sound doctrine being preached. The word of God is being preached. You you get this or you 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 learn it by humbling yourself under godly leadership, under godly vessels of God, purified vessels of, vessels of God that are sent called and sent to preach the word of God, right? And they're preaching it in truth. Right? I ain't talking about mixing doctrines and mixing it to make it mean something that, they, that their flesh want to do. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about preaching the word of God, preaching the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Preaching it in season and out of season. Okay? So we get it through reading, learning, and then I got to live the word. So I began to conform my whole lifestyle to the word of God. Okay? I begin to conform my lifestyle. I, be, I begin to conform my beliefs, my thoughts, my decisions, my perspectives to the word of God. Okay, so as I begin to um, ask God to renew my mind, as my mind is being renewed, and now I'm, I'm more spiritually minded, now the Word of God uh, acts as my constitution. The Word of God acts as my governing agent. It acts as that which governs me and, and, and causes me to, to line up with that. Now, the Word of God don't line up to you. Okay? <laughs> the Word of God was never meant to line up with you. But you are supposed to line up with the Word. Right? I've never seen in Lowe's a 3-inch, 4-inch, and a 5-inch ruler. Never seen. I don't think you will. Because if that's the case, then the ruler was made to line up with whatever we wanted. No. No. Uh-uh. The word of God line. We supposed to line up with the word. Okay? The ruler don't change. Amen. <laughs> right? The ruler don't change to my standard. The ruler does not change to my standards. It does not change to my preferences. Okay? Mm-mm. Just like the word of God. The word of God does not line up with my preferences. Okay? And it behooves us not to sit under folks that try to change the word of God to fit their lifestyle. Amen. No. The Bible says we conform to the image of his son. So we conform to Christ's standard. 
Okay? Be not conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right? So because of that, my mind has to be transformed because I recognize that I cannot be successful in the kingdom of God and cannot be powerful in the kingdom of God. I cannot be fruitful in the kingdom of God if I'm if, if conforming isn't taking place. So I got to yield, I got to submit myself unto uh, unto that standard, unto that rule. Right? The rule don't change. <laughs> The ruler don't change. So, if I, so again, if I got a two by four, it's supposed to be six feet, right? If it's supposed to be six feet, and I cut it five feet, I'm not. We can't expect, or I can't expect the ruler to change the the dimensions because of my error. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> uh uh, no. The specs say it needs to be six feet. So I can't change the specs. I, don't, I can't change the rule. The, the rule says that two by four, it needs to be six feet. Now, if I cut it four feet, then I got to get a new two by four. <laughs> Woo! I got to get a new two by four. And if I got to spend a little extra, in order for me to line up with the rule, then I got to do it. Mm. But what it is, now you got folks, they don't want to change. They want God to align himself with what they've already established. What they already set in motion. So Lord change, no, uh-uh. God changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? So, he, uh, he don't change for us. We change for him. Amen. Boy, that's, boy, that's, that's good right there. That's good. That's good. All right? So, we're reading, learning. I'm living the word. And see, whenever I'm living the word, I, I, it puts me in better position to apply the scriptures. Okay. Don't just sit and hear good preaching, but net, but yet, whenever service is over, you're not able to apply what was preached, and that goes for the preacher too. That's not just for the audience. That's not just for the congregation. That also goes for the person in whom the word is being released from. That goes for the preacher too. That goes from the revivalist, the apostle. Whoever is delivering the word of God. Amen. We've got to apply the scriptures. Okay? You might be saying, uh, well, I got a I got a back ache. Can you buy me some icy hot? Okay, we'll buy you some icy hot. And we give it to you, but yet you never apply it. And you never put it on your back. You got Many believers, they treat the word like that. Lord, send a word. Oh, Lord, that was a good word. Oh, they so preached. Oh, that was a right now word. Oh, that was a real word. Okay, can you apply that? Crickets. Okay, we do good with information. But we do horrible with application. And the word is not going to fight for you. And it's not going to be a useful weapon if we fail in application. If you fail in application, you're not going to win many fights in warfare. Okay? And it's got to be in context. That's when, the, that's when the Spirit of God, that's when the Holy Ghost gives you understanding and give you revelation in terms of what you're reading. So that you can put it in, in, in context. So that you will not drift off in carnality. Amen. And use the word carnally Amen. to justify some sin. Amen. Twist it up. 
twisting scripture. <laughs> All that type of stuff. Just like the enemy did. The second temptation, whenever he took Jesus up on the mount of the pinnacle, he was like, well, the words say you can throw yourself off and the angels will come and, and, and lift you up. At least you dash your foot against the stone. You know, that's the words. You know, the words say. Yeah, it technically reads that verbatim, but that is not the context in which the author, in which God desired it to, to flow in. No, the angels ain't going to come if you purposely, purposely jump off in ignorance, tempting God, trying to get him to, to come to your rescue out of ignorance and foolishness. No. No. Maybe if you accidentally... <laughs> unknowingly dash your foot against the stone. If you accidentally drink any deadly poison, someone try to slip something uh, 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 um, in your drink or slip something in your food or whatever, and there you is living for God and doing all this type of stuff, and you know what I'm saying? I mean, not, not okay, then those things will, will by no means hurt you. But I ain't gonna purposely be eating some rat poison like some Skittles. Like some m and like, oh, Lord, come save the day. No. <laughs> come on now. That's what Jesus meant, that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That's what he meant by that. I'm not going to tempt him and try to move him and put him in a position where he's got to show up because of my dumbness. Oh, man. All right. What's another weapon? Another weapon is prayer. Okay? Another weapon of warfare is prayer. Okay? All right? Another, another uh, weapon of warfare that you can easily be utilized is prayer. The Word of God and prayer is probably the most common weapons but probably the most taken for granted and probably underutilized. Okay? Ephesians 6 and 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication where? We missed it. <laughs> where? In the Spirit. Okay? Ephesians 6 and 18. As a matter of fact, prayer ought to somewhat transition you into the battle. Prayer is a transporter. I like to look at it as prayer is, is, is almost like transportation. Because prayer ought to be able to carry you in Right? On the plane, on the ship, on the army tank. <laughs> it ushers you into that place. Alright? Now, prayer is a weapon that works over large areas. It can cover a lot of territory. Okay? Prayer is like a bomb. <laughs> Use a little bit of vernacular. Prayer is like a bomb. A bomb is able to inflict damage on a large area when it's dropped. Okay? Prayer works the same way. Okay? Prayer is able to cover a lot of area when you're praying. Okay? Prayer shields, protects, provides, and supplies. Prayer has the ability. Prayer is a multi-purpose weapon. If I can use, if I can say that, prayer is a multi-purpose 
multifunctional weapon. Multi-purpose, multifunctional. Okay? Because prayer is doing a lot of things at the same time. Lord have mercy. Prayer is able to check off multiple boxes at the same time. Okay? So this is why the enemy often tries to discourage and tries to limit the prayer life and to destroy the prayer life of the believer is because he recognizes the damage that prayer can do and how effective it is. If the enemy can ever get you to stop praying, then he, he, he has an advantage over you. He has an advantage because prayer is shielding it's protecting, it's blocking some stuff, it's keeping some stuff from happening, it's, it's, it's holding back some stuff, and then at the same time, provision is being made, strength is coming, power is coming. So while prayer is shielding some stuff, prayer is also bringing some stuff. My God, my God. Well, let me say that again. While prayer is shielding some things, it's also supplying some things. While it's holding some stuff back, reinforcements is coming. <laughs> you ever heard or seen in the movies where they say, uh, 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 cover me. Cover me while I go over here and cover me while. And so you have some of, some of the guys and they're shooting, covering the guy running to try to get something else done. That's kind of what prayer does. Prayer holds back some stuff and keeps things at bay while it's working some other stuff behind the scene. Prayer is powerful. Not only that, but prayer. Causes us to uh, get in touch with headquarters. And it permits heaven's involvement in the earth. You see what I'm saying? That's what it's doing. Yes, amen. Okay? God, heaven, we need air support. Amen. <laughs> amen. Send the cavalry. Send the battalion. Send the Lord. We under heavy attack. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are right now, Lord. We under heavy attack. We need you to send, uh, uh, send air support. <laughs> I remember in, uh, in 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 the movie Transformers, Tyrese's uh, Tyrese Gibson's character is uh is 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 shooting shooting the enemy uh, uh Transformer. So he calls. He calls the bomber in the sky. Wow. And he said, bring the rain. <laughs> he said, bring the rain. And, and, and when the rain came, the bomber came and, and, and was hitting the enemy from, from above. Amen. Praise God. They were hitting the enemy straight on, and he called for reinforcements. They hit the enemy from above. And from above, they were dropping bombs. And from above, they were boom, 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 boom. And, and, so, and so the enemy was getting hit from two sides. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And see, whenever you're praying, you're asking God, look, you can get involved Thank down God. here. Thank you, God. Yes. Amen. My God in this Thank place. You, you're, per, you're giving God permission to get involved. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank Lord, you. Lord, you. You're a, hey, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. <laughs> let your kingdom come and let your will be done on the earth yes. as it is in heaven. So you're calling you're calling headquarters. You're calling the base. Prayer 
pleasures in the will of God in our midst. We want the will of God. We want whatever heaven is like. We want that to take place in the earth realm. And prayer bridges that gap. Prayer makes that possible. <laughs> prayer says, God, I want what you got up there. What is established up there and the way it's rolling up there, how things are up there. You got, you got permission to establish that in this situation. Amen. That's what prayer does. And prayer is not just limited to where you are. Because you can send help to other places. That's why I told you prayer covers large areas. Alright? Prayer releases divine assistance and advancement. Okay? Not only will it enable you to be assisted in the matter, but it also will enable you to advance and to overcome in the matter. All right? What's another weapon? Another weapon is fasting. <clears throat> fasting. All right. Fasting is another weapon used in spiritual warfare. Okay. Fasting. All right. Matthew seventeen and twenty one. Matthew seventeen and twenty one. The Bible says. Uh, however, now, now just to give you some context, this is, I think this is whenever Jesus had just, uh, Jesus, Peter, James, and John just came off of, came down from the mountain of transfiguration, okay? It was transfigured, glorified, all right? Almost like a sneak peek <laughs> of him being glorified, okay? They come down from the mountain, and then when they come down from the mountain, they encounter a man who his son was grievously vexed with the devil. The Bible says that he was a lunatic. In other words, he was moonstruck. Lunar means moon, moonstruck. Okay? I don't know what it is about the moon, and it's causing people's minds to, I don't know what that is. Those of you that may have worked with uh, uh, mentally ill people when the moon is out, full moon, seem like you have all these types of episodes. Okay? Um, so I definitely encourage you to study more <laughs> on that connection. <clears throat> and so the disciples couldn't cast out the devil, couldn't deal with it. And so um, Jesus talks with the Father, talks with, you know, how long has the boy been like this? That type of thing, and um, and the father said, uh, "Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief." I remember that part. Lord, help thou my unbelief. And uh, he says that okay, well, the spirit tosses him in the fire and the water, <laughs> trying to drown him and burn him. And so Jesus casts out the devil. Okay, takes him through deliverance, casts out the devil, the devil's gone, the spirit is gone. And then, the, and then the disciples asked Jesus, why come we couldn't cast them out? So then he says, because of your unbelief or because of your, your lack of faith. Right? So then, this, and so that, this is where this verse comes in at. Okay? However, this kind of does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now, I know there's been a lot of debate in terms of what Jesus meant by this kind. Now, there's two meanings that you could hang your hat on. 
Most people teach this, this kind of spirit does not go out except by prayer and fasting. But if you look at the context, they're talking about the issue of faith. They're talking about faith here. So the second meaning is, however, this kind of faith does not go out or is not released except by prayer and fasting. Okay? So I know a lot of people have taught this kind of devil or this kind of spirit does not go out. And I'm not saying you're wrong because it very well could mean that but also factor in this kind of faith does not go out or is not in operation except by prayer and fasting. That's good. Let's talk about the fasting part. Fasting increases our spiritual keenness and awareness. Okay? Fasting increases our spiritual keenness and awareness. Fasting brings you to a place to where you're able to maneuver more in the spirit. Okay? You become more agile. You become more maneuverable. You become more fluid in the spirit. Whenever you fast for real, you be discerning and picking up on stuff in the spirit that otherwise you couldn't have picked up if you hadn't been fasting. Okay? So we become more mobile. We become more keen and aware of spiritual things whenever we are fasting. Okay? Not only that, but fasting limits and minimizes the flesh. And this is part of the reason why some of us, we are not as victorious in, in spiritual things is because the flesh is too much at work. The flesh is dominating your decisions and your ability to, to, to maneuver or to handle spiritual things. Okay, because again, that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. Okay? A carnal man cannot discern spiritual things. Okay? So in order for you to become more maneuverable, in order for you to become more knowledgeable and become more sensitive in the spirit, you got to deal with the flesh. You got to minimize the flesh. And one of the ways you do that is by fasting. Okay? Fasting increases our submission to the spirit. You're yielding to the spirit. A lot of times the spirit of God is all it, it is probably more times than not, is prompting and leading us to do certain things. But a lot of times because of our flesh, because the flesh has not been uh, uh, um, crucified enough, mortified enough, <coughs> or, or put under subjection, we're not able to properly yield or submit to what the Spirit is leading us to do. So whenever we're fasting, we are quieting and we're minimizing, putting to death the flesh so that we are in better position to yield to what Holy Spirit is telling us to do or leading us to do. Okay? Fasting empowers our fight. Fasting empowers our fight. Fasting empowers our fight. Not only that, but fasting strengthens our faith. I've never seen where a child of God came off of a fast and they were weaker in the faith. It's impossible. It doesn't work like that. Okay? You want your faith to increase? Fast. That is one way that your faith takes a jump. Because you're, it's almost like you believe in God for some things that you couldn't believe <laughs> on a fool's stomach. <laughs> right? 
So yeah, whenever you're fasting, your faith is strengthened. Your faith increases. And I'm getting and, and I'm getting that increase through, you know, my connection in through by the Spirit of God. If flesh can ever be minimized and get out of the way, man, we can really do some things. Okay? And then lastly, <clears throat> fasting causes us to sacrifice fleshly pleasure for spiritual purpose. Fasting causes us to sacrifice fleshly pleasure for spiritual purpose. And this is the last scripture I want to end on tonight uh, until hopefully next week we'll finish up some more, we'll, we'll go over some more weapons. Uh, Isaiah 58 and 6, the Bible says, <clears throat> now, Isaiah 58 and 6 are some um, res results of whenever fasting is properly imp implemented. Isaiah 58 and 6, the Bible says, is this not the fast that I have chosen? Okay? Not to lose weight. Not to become more fit. <laughs> not <laughs> now you will lose you if you fast consistently, then you will lose weight as a result of that. But you're not fasting with the sole purpose to lose weight. Because you're misappropriating the fast. Okay? Is this not the fast that I have chosen to what? To loose the bonds of wickedness? That's one of the results of fasting. That the bonds of wickedness will be loosed. To undo the heavy burdens, heavy burdens be lifted as a result of fasting. To let the oppressed go free, some stuff get freed up as a result of fasting. When you do it genuinely, when you do it by your heart, through your heart, when you do it uh, sincerely, right? And that you break every yoke, that you break the yoke. So there's about one, two, three, there's about four results of fasting in Isaiah 58 and 6. It sounds like the enemy was, was messing around in, in this verse. <laughs> it sounded like something the enemy was doing. He tied up stuff. He put heavy burdens, oppression, and putting on yokes. That sounded like warfare to me. <laughs> Don't that sound like warfare to y'all? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, those of you that are at home, it's yeah. So, so, so don't ever feel as if your fasting is in vain or your fasting is not effective. Because in the spirit, manifesting in the, in the midst of whatever you're fasting for, man, some bonds are being loosed, heavy burdens getting lifted, oppressing, uh, uh, the oppressed going free, and the yokes being destroyed. I've seen it happen. It, it has happened in my life as a result of coming off a of fast, as a result of what God was doing. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, so the weapons that we covered tonight was the Word of God, prayer, and fasting. Okay? The Word of God, prayer, and fasting. Okay? I'm not going to go over all seven tonight. Um... You know, just just for time limit's sake, I'm gonna go over, go over all seven. But uh, you have to understand the weapons that you have at your disposal, okay? Whenever, whenever it pertains to warfare. All right. Preferably next week we will continue on in going over these weapons and really teaching you how how they're used, teaching you how they are effective, how they're implemented, and uh, we'll go forward uh, in the teaching. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, tonight, Lord, for the teaching tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for the, your understanding and your insight. 
God, I just thank you, Lord, for making it plain to us, so Father God, that uh, 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 even the babes can understand it. So God, even now, God, let everything that was uh, taught on tonight, God, let it rest. God, let it, uh, Lord, let it even incubate. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord, that it may produce results and it can be easily applicable, God, to those that have heard it and, and sat under, the, under this teaching tonight. God bless us and are going out and are coming in. And God will forever give your name the praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.